You were just listening to an excerpt from the Red Lantern Opera, which premiered in China in 1964. This sets the scene for the topic of our podcast today. Hi, I'm Olivia. And I'm Leo. And we are students of Bates College, class of 27. And this semester, we've had the pleasure of being part of Professor Nolan's documentary photography class. On this episode of your new favorite podcast series, Crop and Click, considering truth, objectivity, and politics in documentary photography, Leo and I will be taking a closer look at Untitled One, a black and white documentary photograph taken by Ming Zhao in China in 2002. This image can be found on the Bates Art Museum website at bates.edu slash museum by searching the image tag 2004.8.1. We will be examining the power of documentary photography, a form of media that can have both artistic and informative values. Despite its name, documentary photography has the power to do more than just document or record a scene. It can point the viewer in a specific direction, skew or warp reality, and illuminate or leave out certain perspectives. Exactly. A photographer's viewpoints and biases can significantly impact how and what the image communicates. Every artistic choice can change the perception and connotation of an image. Documentary images like Zhao's contain much more than what meets the eye. This deceptively simple image depicts a hidden truth in the impact of Chinese history on modern society, illustrating one of the most important aspects of the medium of documentary photography. Leo, what's the first thing you see in this image? Well, what immediately captures my eye is without a doubt the famous portrait of former Chinese leader Mao Zedong. And then my eye travels to the right side of the image, which shows a street vendor selling old gramophones and typewriters. You're right. The portrait takes up practically the entire left half of the photograph's composition. The perspective of the camera shows Mao as much larger than he was in real life. It's not true to scale. It is a testament to his lasting authority and enduring impact on the People's Republic of China. His grandness in the photograph is imposing, insisting that he is to be seen first and foremost. There is no way for the eye to avoid him, especially since its blinding white outline sharply contrasts the dark shadows that fall over the right side of the image. The original portrait of Mao was made by effigy painter Zhang Zenshi in 1950 for the first anniversary of the communist takeover of mainland China. It is without a doubt his most iconic image. When people think of Mao, they picture the face from that portrait. Over 30 painters were originally chosen for this commission, but Mao picked Zhenxi's rendition as his favorite. This portrait has been curated and perfected to ensure that Mao is envisioned in a very specific way, even in situations like this photograph where he is no longer in control of the context in which he is being viewed. Yes, the history of this portrait is really interesting. As you were saying, just like the viewer cannot avoid Mao's face in the image, when he was in power, his intense beliefs and tyrannical rule were unavoidable to the Chinese people. He ruled China from 1949 to 1976, instituting many policies intended to restrict the freedom of speech and expression for the Chinese people. He was also responsible for an estimated 40 to 80 million deaths in his own country, largely from starvation and mass executions. Leo, what I know to be the most significant part of Mao's rule was how he restricted the expression of speech and thought, especially of that which did not fall within what he deemed to be acceptable. Yeah, Olivia, I know what you mean. It's as if he can sense the taking of the photograph and how this modern form of communication goes against his oppressive beliefs. Exactly. I think there's also something to be said about the fact that the contents of the street vendor behind his portrait are gramophones and typewriters. These outdated forms of creating and transferring information are objects that represent freedom of speech and media that greatly contrast the beliefs that Mao enforced in society. The subjects are inspecting these forms of communication literally behind Mao Zedong's back, as if going against the government's historically restrictive censorship. Also, the gramophone and typewriter are facing both us as the viewers as well as the subjects speaking directly to the citizens rather than to the authoritative figure of Mao.
What I find especially interesting is how the group of people in the background of the image seem unfazed that there is a massive photograph of a dictator right in front of them. I wonder how often people in China see these images. Actually, this portrait of Mao Zedong can still be found all over present-day China, which I think reinforces the idea of how the legacy of his rule still lingers in modern society. Leo, I wonder how people in China feel about this image today. Well, when I first saw this image, I assumed that the people of China resented Mao for the years of oppression and hardship that were synonymous with his rule. If there were pictures of a former leader of the U.S. who restricted freedoms and caused a large number of casualties hanging in Times Square, for example, I would be pretty upset. But if this photograph is any indication, it appears as if the people actively ignore the portrait of Mao and live their lives. However, it turns out this is not the case at all. According to the New York Times, from a study that surveyed Chinese people, Chinese citizens still see Mao as a positive influence on China. When they look at a picture of Mao, they see the leader who fought to unify the nation against Japanese and Western policies, creating a more simple and constructive era for China. Many Chinese people indicated that they were nostalgic for the simpler time associated with Mao's rule. Leo, you're right about how the subjects in the image seem to be ignoring the portrait of Mao. Of the five human subjects in this image, we can only see the face of one, Mao. The four faceless, unrecognizable Chinese shoppers almost disappear into the shadows of the image, and each one of them is either sitting, crouching, or bowing over. Their body language makes them physically and metaphorically smaller than Mao Zedong displaying a powerlessness and lack of authority in comparison to the former leader. Unlike Mao's direct knowledge of the photographer's presence as he stares into the lens, these subjects have their back turns to the camera, with no way of knowing that they are being recorded by Zhao. Their obliviousness to the photographer's watchful lens reflects a similar blindness to the Chinese government's invasive surveillance methods. Yeah. The contents of the street vendor's store add to this narrative about surveillance and restricted media. I think that we can draw a lot of parallels between Mao's restrictive policies and current day policies regarding freedom of speech in China. It's widely known that the Chinese government monitors communications between citizens and flags any speech that is potentially critical of the government. While it might not be as extreme as Mao's imprisonment campaign, many current day citizens live in fear of the current government and refrain from discussing its activities with each other. Just like in Mao's time, most media that people consume is filtered through government channels to prevent any Western influence. By capturing these outdated items of communication, Zhao is so casing how in 50 years, not much has changed. He's critiquing how the current government of China is very similar and just as oppressive to Mao's government. Your comparison of the past and current Chinese government is very interesting especially when thinking about the fact that this image is in black and white. Knowing that Meng Zhao took this photograph in 2002, long after color photography had become accessible, his decision to make the photograph black and white was intentional. I think Zhao made this choice to enhance the contrast between the two kinds of subjects pictured. The grayscale inherently brings out greater contrast, deepening the darks and lightening the whites within an image. The way Zhao framed this image, essentially dividing it in half with the portrait of Mao and the active scene to its right, the black and white allows for a further divide to be created, simply through the use of contrast and lack of color. Where the poster of Mao stops, a line is drawn down the center of the photograph, dividing it into two, light versus dark. The image's half-and-half -half blocking of light and dark almost resembles that of a yin and yang symbol. The symbol, a concept of interconnected opposites, speaks to the separation between Chinese governmental leadership and its citizens throughout history and even today. Simply through the omission of color, the conversation about the oppressive nature of the Chinese government and its freedomless citizens is amplified and visualized. For me, this photograph is perfect for showcasing how documentary photography can be used to expose an issue and portray a picture of injustice. 
Zhao points out an obvious but extremely overlooked relationship between the past and present in China and changes how we view the issue of freedom of expression. Within this image, Zhao presents a truthful telling of complex power struggles within modern-day China by framing the world in front of him. Zhao did not change the contents of the image to tell his story, but instead utilized his eye and his camera as a tool to make the composition, perspective, and contrast voice this powerful narrative for him. Thank you for listening to our podcast. In this episode, we explored Untitled Number、no. One, a photograph taken by Ming Zhao in 2002. We discussed how Zhao painted a narrative through the lens of his camera and told us a story about oppression and compliance. We examined how artistic choices and deliberate techniques impacted how we viewed this image. We would like to thank Professor Nolan and our peers for working hard towards this project, and the Bates College Museum of Art for allowing us to showcase our ideas and giving us the platform to share this podcast. And last but certainly not least, thank you for taking the time to listen to our podcast, and we hope you learned something new about the complex world of documentary photography.